so welcome to blazing gamer and in today's video i'll be showing you about a little small project uh, that I had been doing during my vacations so it took me about one week to make uh, this i don't call it a game it's basically a voxel generation just like minecraft it's not infinite generation because while i was designing it uh, i came up with a stupid solution so it's really hard now to convert it to an infinite terrain but it is uh, semi infinite you could say and let me just show you how it works so basically uh, this is the main screen where you can configure the world properties the seed frequency world size of test and also if i just keep it on default and generate so you can see uh, it generates a 5 by 5 actually it would be 6 by 6 uh, it's one plus uh, basically it's a voxel terrain uh, that's generated and uh, I must say I'm proud of this because ever since I started game development uh, I want to do something with voxel terrain or procedural generation because uh, myself I'm not that great of an artist so procedural generation is a way that I can go by it. like if you take example of Minecraft that game fascinates me a lot and there is not much art uh, like artwork into that game rather than ingenious code so I was trying something like that so as you can see this is basically generates a voxel terrain according to the world properties I set and uh, the terrain inside is fully hollow and that's how it should be generated so no extra faces or vertices are being drawn so if I go back to the home screen and I'll change with some properties so if I take the world size as 10 and generate the world so it would take a little while to load the world but it would generate a terrain like this so uh, when i first developed it so it used to all work on a single thread and it was just last day of the week i added a bit of multi-threading so what happens right now is the chunk columns are instantiated on the main thread because in unity unity actually works on a single thread only so you can't call unity functions from different threads it will just go haywire so chunk columns are instantiated on the main thread uh, they are generated on separate threads and again they are drawn on the main thread and that's basically how uh, it's just a simple threading mechanism it's not at all optimal i mean i could have done way better than that but threading gets a lot confusing but that's how it's work and it's the tree generation that took quite a while because i made super silly logic colors while doing the tree generation and all the texture atlases for this uh, i drew myself because i know i'm not that good with that but it doesn't mean i won't try so the grass and dirt textures are basically really basic there's just dots on them to give them but it's the um, tree bark texture that i'm really proud of which actually good looks uh, good the leaves uh, i wasn't able to create leaves so i just downloaded them but that's all and then there's also a stone which you can see from the edge of the world like this uh, stone is basically three layers of dirt then grass then stone so that's basically how the terrain generation works and i have many properties that effect how the terrain generates so seed basically you are pretty familiar would be the seed basically uh, the noise function works totally on the seed the frequency decides the how flat or smooth the terrain would be so if i do a zero frequency generate so it would just generate a flat world okay and if i bump up the frequency to this much and generate it would be a pretty hilly world as you can see is being generated so that's what frequency does now octaves basically uh, are the minor details that go into terrain so basically when the terrain uh, the noise function works in a way that there are as uh, if you have four octaves there will be multiple iterations of noise on a single block and that would be the equal to the number of octaves so if i increase the number of octaves to say six the little details in the terrain would increase so as you can uh, it's uh, a bit hard to tell so if i do something with four octaves and if you keep in the mind 
it's a bit a little smooth now if i increase the octaves to 8 and generate you can see there is more little details like there's more variation at small heights in the terrain and that's what octave does and there's then lacunarity uh, which uh, in basically controls the height displacements in the adjacent blocks so if i increase the lacunarity to about three and do a generate so uh, not visible like this so at five you can see there is more displacement in individual blocks like this block and this block the height difference would be about five or four but lacunarity basically controls that and persistence is something i actually don't understand what it does but i know its value has to be between zero to one so if i increase the persistence to about 0 0.9 we get like more sober i would say yeah persistence basically uh, shows the effect of octaves so uh, the persistence the more there is the effect of octaves like oh the chunk generation messed up here sometimes that happens uh, as the chunks are generated on separate threads sometimes they don't generate so if i just do it again will that happen again no this time they generated so yeah the persistence effects in a different way and as you can see sometimes chunks don't generate so if i do a game that's basically a bit of a threading issue uh, if i see it this time yeah and this time also the chunks aren't generating uh, it sometimes happens i can't figure out why but if i reduce the persistence Basically, sometimes the persistence takes the heights too much high and because of which chunks don't generate. But as you can see right now, the chunks have generated. And this approach of generating chunks is pretty optimal. Uh, no extra faces are generated this way. But to make this infinite, uh, I can't just make my, the way I have built the architecture. Can't just basically be turned into an infinite world. Uh, like it could be done it would require a lot of effort but that won't be easy so what i think would be better is if i redesign the whole architecture and like now right now i have generated a 21 by 21 size of world so it will take a while to generate so if you want to see this is how the world generates uh, it's basically one chunk column per frame and voxel generation is something that would be greatly benefited with ecs like right now uh i just basically understand the concept of ecs uh, which unity is trying to introduce is basically keep the data and the systems separate and similarly that can be done really nicely with voxel terrain as voxel data can be kept in entities and just one generation system can generate all the chunks and I think that would be a really optimized way as you can see this chunk again did not generate that basically happens if the height increases too much I don't have like limitations right now but if the height goes above 120 I guess this is happening because of that and I may look into it and it would be a simple fix but as you can see uh, terrains can be nicely generated with the system so if you're going for a fixed size world this can be used but uh, for infinite size world a little more work would be required so that's all i wanted to show uh, in today's video i hope you liked it and if you would like to see a tutorial series on it do leave a like and comment on if you have any suggestions because i'm really new to the voxel generation side of things so if you have any suggestions, please do leave them down below. Uh, anyway, thank you. Uh, thanks for tuning in.